All right, video number three, solving inequalities. The goal, same as solving equations, is to simply isolate the variable to one side of the inequality. Then the other kicker you need to remember, remember the negative rule. Only when you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the inequality. So we'll have to remember that part. All right, so the deal is this. If you still want to draw a line just like you always drew a line through the equal sign, you can. Again, you're going through the steps. You're saying, okay, where is the variable? It's on the left. What else is there? A plus 4. I need to subtract 4 from both sides. I'm left with, since I didn't multiply or divide by a negative, I'm keeping the symbol the same. 10 minus 4 is 6. That is my final inequality for this inequality problem. Again, if you want to put the bar there, that's fine, okay? So, same as before, here I have 3x times 9. Which side, of the which side of that inequality is the variable? On the left. What else is sitting there? That 3. How do I move that to the other side? I need to divide both sides by 3. Again, I did not multiply or divide by a negative this time, so the symbol stays the same, and I'm left with x is less than or equal to 3 as my final answer. All right, here I have negative 4x is greater than 20. So again, I ask myself, which side is the variable on the left? What else is sitting there? Well, that negative 4 is attached to that x. How do I get rid of it? I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 4. Now, here is where the rule applies. I am dividing or multiplying by a negative, so I need to flip this sign which then I will have an x over here, because negative 4 divided by negative 4, and a negative 5 there. That right there is my final answer, but notice I had to flip the inequality sign from the original one that was sitting up there. That was another step I had to take. So remember, anytime you multiply or divide by a negative, you have to flip the inequality sign. So the problem here says 2x plus 5 is greater than 25. Draw your line if you need to. So I just have a multi-step problem sitting here. That's all I have. So the first thing is I need to get rid of that 5 because, again, you ask yourself, which side of the inequality is the variable? Left. What else is there? That plus 5 and that 2 attached to it. How do I start moving things? I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. I'm left with a 2x. Again, I didn't divide or multiply by a negative, so my inequality sign is the same. 25 minus 5 is 20. So now, again, just like before, we're going to divide both sides by 2. And I am left with x is greater than 10, because I didn't multiply or divide by a negative, so that stays the same. All right, so again, I'm drawing that line. Now, again, please, 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 don't let these problems scare you. This is simply just a two-step problem. It just looks like a fractions, but fractions are our friends. So, step one is to get rid of this three. Remember what we've done before. We're going to multiply both sides by three over one or by three. Okay? And the reason why I do that is because then those threes cancel out. So then I have x minus 2 is less than or equal to 12. Again, I did not multiply or divide by a negative, so I don't have to flip the inequality sign. Then we're back to good old old school. Just simply add 2 to both sides, and I'm left with x is less than or equal to 14. That's my final answer. Okay, so now I just have bigger numbers attached to my variables. But the process is still the same. You can choose how you're going to do this. I still like that positive x value, so I don't have to worry about flipping a sign. So my first step is going to be to subtract 4x from both sides. You may want to do differently, and that is okay with me. So I have 7 is greater than x minus 10. Then, just like before, I'm going to add 10 to both sides. And I would have a 17 on this side. I did not multiply or divide by negative, so that stays the same. So 17 is greater than x. However, that looks weird to a lot of people. 
So you might want to flip that and put the X on this side, make sure the symbol is going in the same direction, the pointy end going to the X. These are the same. These two are exactly the same. It's just one, the X is over here, and the 17 is over here, and this one, I flip the X to the left side, and the 17 is over here. I'm okay if you leave it like this. I'm also okay if you flip it like this, as long as you flip it properly, making sure that sign gets flipped, because again, Notice the pointy end. The pointy end in this case was going towards the X. All right, you know me by now. We've got to do a problem like this because we can't be afraid of these problems. This is not something to fear. This is just multi-steps. But again, I want to always get rid of that denominator as my first step. To get rid of that denominator, I'm going to multiply both sides by that negative 3. In this case, negative 3 over 1 times negative 3. Now remember my rule. When I multiply by a negative, this thing right here has to flip. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this. This is negative 15, 5 times negative 3. Remember, over here, those canceled out. That's why I did that. So I have 2x minus 5. Still have some steps to cruise through here. No problem. So again, Look in there. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. A little tricky here, okay? In that sense, negative 15 plus 5 is a negative 10. And then my last step is simply divide by 2. Again, I'm not multiplying or dividing by a negative, so I don't have to flip the symbol. I already did that at the top. And x is less than negative 5 would be my final answer. So again, if you just break these down into steps, they're not as overwhelming but I wanted you to see all the steps there um, at the end.